This is section 5.4, Indefinite Integrals and the Net Change Theorem. Our third and final objective is to apply the concept of integral as net change to other story problems. When we're done, I'd like you to be able to discuss how you determine the units for any given accumulation. We're spending a lot of time on this section 5.4 because I have noticed over the past 15-20 years the AP exam has really, really focused on these types of problems. And the reason they do so is that this section allows an opportunity for us to braid together everything that we learned in section 4.3 about curve analysis, everything we learned in section 5.3 about fundamental theorem of calculus, and everything we know about accumulation. And this particular objective will require you to interpret accumulations and to write new functions out of accumulations of old functions and to know what they represent in the context of the problem. But you will notice as you do more and more of these that they all have some similar characteristics. And so I want to discuss these here before you actually go and try and practice the, ex the examples that I have in the videos. Every single one of these problems will give you a rate. And that rate can be given to you mathematically as a function. It can be given to you in a chart of data, so it's numerical, or it can be given to you graphically with just a picture. But no matter how they give you that rate, it's always going to be measured in some unit per time. And then your job is going to be to use this to answer questions about the actual amount of something that you have. So the amount is going to be connected to the rate because the derivative of that amount will be the rate at which the amount is changing. If we want to find the function a itself, we're going to need a single point on the function and you'll find in all of these problems that they give you information about that function at a particular time. And then we also need the derivative. Once we have the point and the derivative, we can write an expression for the amount at any time. It will be where we started, or the initial amount that we had, plus the accumulation from when we had that amount up to t on that rate function. Notice I wrote that in terms of x's because we don't want to have the same variable up here as we do on the inside. Once we write the function this way, we can now answer any question they might have about this amount function. We could put in a particular time and talk about how much water is in a tank, how much sand has washed off a beach, how many mosquitoes are on an island, how much snow is on a driveway, how much blood is in a blood vessel, etc., etc., etc. If we're given the rate at which things are changing, we can accumulate that rate and talk about how much of that accumulation we actually have. We can also talk about when this function is increasing and decreasing by taking the derivative of it. We can talk about when this function is concave up or concave down by taking the second derivative of it. And we can talk about the max and min values of this function by taking the derivative, looking for the critical points, and examining the end points if we have them. So no matter how we do it, we're going to be connecting a rate to its parent function, and we're going to be able to analyze it within the context of the problem. So what becomes a big deal is analyzing the units. If we have any rate given to us, and we are told that rate is measured in units per time, and then we accumulate over time, we will be left with just the top of that rate's unit fraction. So I'd like you to use this now as kind of the background as you go through the three example videos for these three problems.